Today we are going to talk about whether a function is even or odd. And we're going to be both algebraically as well as analyzing its graph. So two parts of the one learn. Now I want to clarify something that some people tend to get confused. When we did the dance moves for end behavior, we said positive even, negative even. But remember, we were talking about the function being even or odd. We were talking about its degree. Degree even is its degree odd when we did end behavior. So determining even and odd is not as simple as looking at the degree. The degree could be odd and the function even. So um, it's not quite that simple and I just don't want you to get that confused um, with this. So dance moves not the same thing as this. So we've got a little chart here to help us determine if something is even if it's odd and there are some that are going to be neither even nor odd. I know that seems kind of um, anti-intuitive um, but there are some that are not. So we're going to talk about algebraically first and what you do algebraically to find if a function is even or odd is you plug in negative x in place of x in the function and simplify it. Once you simplified it, if you compare your original function to the new function, and I'm using fxn as an abbreviation for function, if when you simplify them you get the exact same function, nothing about it different, no signs different, If it's exactly the same, then that means it's an even function. If when you plug in negative x in place of x and simplify, you look at the original and your new and you get opposites on all the coefficients and constants, I'll write that underneath, I don't think I can fit it. If all of the coefficients and constants are opposites, then that's going to be odd. Again, really important, either all pieces exactly the same or all of the pieces opposites. If one of them is not opposite and the rest are, that doesn't satisfy the qualification for being odd. Um, so neither is when you plug in negative x for your x, you're comparing them, and it's a combination of some of the terms being the same and some of the terms being opposite. So if you have that combination, then it's neither even nor odd. Okay, so now that we've talked about this algebraic comparison, we're going to look at example one to kind of bring that to life, so to speak. So what we are doing again is we're plugging in negative x in place of x. So f of negative x here, everything stays the same, negative 3, except in place of x. Every time I see x, I'm going to plug in negative x. Now I need to simplify. And again, you can see why it's so important that you know your exponent rules. Here, exponents need to come first. And I have to cube everything that's in that parenthesis. So I cube the negative 1, and that gives me negative 1. And then I cube the x to give me x cubed. So I've got negative 3 times negative 1 times x cubed there, because again, Power of a product means this cube needs to go on both that negative 1 and the um, x. Over here, this is just multiplication, and that's going to give me negative 2x. So this here, negative 3 times negative 1, is positive 3. So I've got positive 3x cubed minus 2x. So now I look at them. It's obviously not the same function, so I check. Is negative 3x cubed and 3x cubed opposite? Yes, they are. 2x and negative 2x opposite? Yes, they are. So all of the terms here were opposite, which means that this is an odd function.
here, doing the exact same thing, going to plug in my negative x in place of x. So I've got negative 5 times negative x squared plus 4. So use your exponent rules. When I square this, negative x times negative x is positive x squared. So positive x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. And then I've got plus 4. So first terms are the same. Second terms are the same. All terms are the same. So this is an even function. Let's try it again. 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 6. I'm going to plug in negative x in place of x everywhere I see it. So negative x to the third power. Please, please, please make sure that you are using your parentheses when you plug in your negative x because that will make a huge difference if you do not. All right, so now I'm going to use my exponent rules. So I've got 2 times, when I cube the negative, that gives me negative 1. Cube the x, that gives me x cubed. Next term, when I cube or square the negative 1, that gives me 1. Square the x, gives me x squared. Over here, negative times a negative is a positive, so plus 4x, and then plus 6. So now simplifying in here, 2 times negative 1 times x cubed, that's negative 2x cubed. This is going to give me minus 3x squared. And then I've got plus 4x plus 6. So when I start comparing, my first terms are opposite of each other. My second terms are the same. So I don't even need to look further. These are opposites, these are the same. So I've got half of them that are opposites and half of them that are the same, which means that this function is neither even nor odd. So you can see here, again, it's not as simple as saying the degree is 3, it's odd, because this one is not. All right, um, last one, I would like for you to try it. And so pause it and then come back to check your answer. All right, so f of negative x here means I'm going to put negative x up here on the top. On the bottom, I've got negative x squared and then minus 1. So top is negative x. Bottom, negative 1 squared is positive 1. x squared is x squared. So 1x squared and then minus 1. So just because this is a fraction doesn't change what I'm doing. I look here at my terms. My numerator is opposite. My denominator is the same. So I need to look at this and say, hmm, if I were to separate these terms, it's really just one thing because I can't take away the x squared from the negative 1. So this is one single term. And this negative x, you can't just look at them separately and say denominator, numerator. These terms can't be separated. So this is one term. And if I look at this term, the letters are all the same. What's different is the one sign. So this was a positive term, and this is a negative term which means that these are opposites. I've got positive x over x squared minus 1, and down here I've got negative x over x squared minus 1. So the only term that's there, the single term, it's opposite, which means that this is an odd function. All right, so hopefully you've got the first part of the le learning goal that we can determine even or odd algebraically. Now we need to be able to determine if it's even or odd by analyzing the graph. So fill in our chart. When you are looking at the graph, it is going to be an even function 
if it's symmetric about the y-axis. So that means if you fold it on the y-axis, the two halves would line up on top of each other. So symmetric about the y-axis means if you folded your paper like a hot dog up and down, that the two halves would line up right on top of each other. So that's pretty easy to determine just by looking, a lot easier than the algebra here. Odd, however, is a little more complicated. When you're looking at the graph, an odd function is symmetric about the origin. Now, most people don't know what it means to be symmetric about the origin, so that's why I've explained it here. If you pick a point on any side of your y-axis, so if you pick um, a point that's on the left side in quadrant 2, and you have to draw a line from that point through the origin that's the same length on the other side. That means you should get to another point on the graph. Now, again, this explanation probably doesn't make sense just with the words. When we look at the examples, you're going to see what I mean by this. I will actually pick points and draw those lines for you so you understand what that means. A function is neither even nor odd if when you're looking at the graph it's neither of those two things. It's not symmetric about the y-axis or about the origin. Notice that being symmetric on the x-axis doesn't mean anything. That would still be neither. Alright, so let's look at that with our graphs. So it says sketch a graph of each function below. Use it to determine if the function is even, odd, or neither. So what we are going to do is we are going to look and we are going to sketch x cubed minus x. So if you don't already have your graphing calculator out, get it out and punch in that function. And again, this is a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we probably do want to be relatively accurate. This is a really skinny graph, so don't draw it really fat because it's pretty skinny. What I'm going to look at is where I think it crosses the x-axis, and then I'm going to approximate any minimums or maximums. So I look and I see it crosses the x-axis negative 1, 0, and 1. You can just see that by eyeballing it. Then it has a tiny little maximum right about here, just below one, and a tiny little minimum down there. So basically it curves in here and then goes up and down to infinity. All right, so determining if it's even or odd, I look at it and I say, is this symmetric about the y-axis? If I folded it right here, would it line up on top of itself? No, it wouldn't because this would come over here, which is not where it is. So next, I need to determine if it's symmetric about the origin. So I take a point on either side of the y-axis. So I'm going to take this right here. If I connect that to the origin and go the same length in the other direction, do I have an exact point there? I do, right here and right here. If I take this point and I connect it to the origin, which is one unit, if I go one unit the other way, do I end up on another exact point? Yes, I do, right here. Let's say I took a point that's way up here. If I draw the line to the origin right there, pretty steep, do I have that same point way down here? If you look at your graph, yes, you do. This is symmetric about the origin, which means that this is odd. Now, here's another way that you can kind of think about this drawing the lines to the origin. If your point x, y is on there, what it means by drawing these lines and making sure it's the same dis distance, if x, y is on there and it's an odd function, then that means negative x, negative y should be on there. So look at this. This point was um, at 
negative 1, 0. So negative 1, 0, if I change both of the signs, that's positive 1, 0, which is on the graph. This point looks like it might be about 2, 6. 2, 6 is on there. That means negative 2, negative 6 should also be on there, which it is. So that's another way to think about what it means to be symmetric about the origin. This one is, so this one is an odd function. All right, so let's um, sketch the next picture. So punch this function into your graph and calculator and go ahead and sketch it. Again, it might be helpful to use the table just so you can see better points and make it a more exact graph. All right, this one is pretty similar to the first graph as far as how skinny it is in the middle with its little uh, mins and maxes. But the graph looks something like this. It's obviously not symmetric about the y-axis. You can't fold it hot dog style and get it to line up. So I'm going to show you again how to use this shortcut for symmetric about the origin. This point that we see right there, its coordinates are negative 1, negative 1. So if this were symmetric about the origin, that means that positive 1, positive 1 should be a symmetric point. Positive 1, positive 1 is right here. That point is clearly not on the graph. So this is not symmetric about the origin. It was not symmetric about the y-axis. So that means this one is neither even nor odd. All right. Let's do the next one. x plus 1 squared. This one you should be able to graph without your graphing calculator because it is a parabola in vertex form. There is no k out here, which means k is 0, so it means it has a vertex at negative 1, 0. Since a is 1, your next points go up 1 in each direction, and then over 2 and up 4 in the other direction. Again, if you had to use your calculator, um, that's fine. It just takes a little more time here. That's what my graph looks like. I know that that is what my graph looks like. So now I say, is that symmetric about the y-axis? Well, if I fold that on the y-axis, this part is going to end up right over here, this part of it right here. And that's not where it is. It's way more over than that. This one's line of symmetry, that's one reason why we did lines of symmetry when we did parabolas, is right here. So it's not symmetric about the y-axis. It's symmetric, but it's about this vertical line right here. So this is not symmetric about the y-axis. In order to be symmetric about the origin, each point would have to have its opposite point. This point right here is at 1, 4. If I go to negative 1, negative 4, that point is definitely not on my graph. That point would be way down here. So this is not symmetric about the origin, so this one is also neither. Last one. When you punch this into your calculator, you have to make sure that you put parentheses around your denominator. Because if you don't, you're graphing the wrong function. Remember that fraction bars imply parentheses. You have to separate the numerator from denominator. So don't forget the parentheses when you punch this in. So I do x to the fourth divided by parentheses x squared minus 1 close parentheses and graph it. This one is an interesting looking graph which we'll study a little bit later on in the year. It's very skinny but you can see that it looks like there's a parabola type shape that's very skinny right down here and then it also has two kind of lopsided looking parabola shapes way up at the top so they look something like this alright so symmetry 
if I fold this on the y-axis, is it going to line up on top of itself? Well, if I fold it on the y-axis, this part right here would line up right here. So that works. This over here, if I flip it over, would end up here. So the top part is symmetric about the y-axis. Now I need to look at the other part. This, if I flipped it over the y, would end up right here. So yes, all pieces of that could be folded over the y-axis. This is an even function. All right, so we've looked at a bunch of graphs. Hopefully you can determine graphically whether it's even or odd. And hopefully you can also plug in negative x for x to determine algebraically if it's even or odd. That is all for today.